mean, I know this isn't prurient interest. I actually found it quite an interesting story. A group of 35 strippers working for Wellington's Calendar Girls Club have signed an email asking the strip club's management for better pay and written invoices for their services, rather than the 50% tip cut they receive under their new contract. They've asked for the previous cut of 60% to continue. Uh, the day after sending an email on January 31st, a manager asked the dancers via fa Facebook post to clear out their lockers. So they've been fired or they're on strike. Um, and look, I just want to say, as far as I know, and I'm not a, a, a frequent frequenter of such clubs, you walk in there, apparently you buy sort of like this ugh, filthy Monopoly money and then girls dance around and, I don't know, and then they'll come and talk to you and you give them some money and they buy you a really bad drink um, and they have their own little internal economy. And I'll be brutally frank, I find such places bloody sad because it seems everyone's exploiting or BSing someone else. But my moral conundrum aside, they're legitimate places of business. They are not doing anything illegal. Um, but this militant... See, amongst, I don't know what you call them, strippers, exotic dancers, I don't know how it works or how it's codified. I think it's interesting, and I think everyone's got a right um, not to be exploited in their workplace in any way whatsoever. So joining us now to discuss, well, the incident, the dispute, is New Zealand sex workers' rights activist and spokesperson for the New Zealand Sex Workers Collective, Dame Catherine uh, Healy. Healy. Uh, Catherine, nice to talk to you again. Uh, welcome to the platform. Oh, thank you. It's been a few decades, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, Catherine, firstly, are the Sex Workers Collective involved in this action or this dispute? As allies. You know, the people, the stripper dancers are advocating, as we know, um, effectively, and we're there as allies supporting them. Yeah. Where do they fit in? Is there a pecking order? Because uh, I wouldn't see, and I'm a naive person in regards to this, I wouldn't see someone who does the old pole dance in an outfit like Calendar Girls as a sex worker. Well, the term is eclectic and it was introduced to, you know, be an inclusive term. So definitely um, they come under that category, whether they identify as a sex worker or a stripper dancer, we would see them as being part of the great family of okay. um, sex workers. Okay. So have you talked to anyone involved in this dispute? Constantly. Okay. It's been, yep, it's been, you know, it's con it's constant discussions about the nature of independence in these clubs, the nature of the coercive um, contracts, you know, where it, where it lands when they're tipped out into the night um, with, without a sense that they have any redress. It's, um, it's, okay, it's, it's so astounding. describe for me the conditions they work under and the contracts they have hitherto signed. They have a lot of penalties. That's the thing that makes my um, hair stand on end um, related to things like being rude to bosses. You know, if you're rude to a boss, you know, that's a $500 fine. And who decides that? that? Who decides wrong. what being rude is? The boss. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And other things, you know, like, you know, turn up when you're sick, you know, that kind of thing, you know, bullying, um, and, you know, lots of other things that are quite intimate to that industry. Okay. I, I'm going to say something to you you won't like, but I'm sure this is reflective of the attitude where people, where people say, and I'm not saying I agree with it, but I'd like you to speak to it. A lot of people will say that if you are working in a place like that, I guess you guess what you deserve. You get what you deserve. It's a question of social status. Well, if you're a stripper, you're not worth much. Why should we bother? You should get a real job or a job with some respect. You're all, always going to be exploited. What did you expect? That's right. I think that line um, is certainly there. People do express those sentiments. You know, it's victim blaming. Um, the, you know, I, I but, think but, but if you, you choose know, the, to be a stripper, don't you make yourself a victim by the very nature of the industry? No, I don't think, it, you know, being a sex worker is about making yourself a victim. I think, you know, when I went, became a sex worker, I was reaching out, I was stepping out of a classroom where I was teaching into sex work and 
making a conscious decision that I wanted to earn more money. And that, you know, is a conscious decision for most people who work in sex work related activities. Okay. So it also strikes me, uh, I'm presuming, and they have this strange, as I said, it seems to me, internal economy. You can't buy a drink with normal money. And I don't know what the reason for this is. I guess that gives the bar owners or, or, or the club owners a level of control of everything that goes on inside their institution, that you can't use real money in these places, right? Well, I can't really comment um, with great authority in that respect, but, you know, I imagine it's um, a practical reason. Yeah. You know, there are so many people working there, and if you drop your money, you know, you drop your... Yeah. You, you could lose real money and all, yeah. the, all that sort of stuff, you know. Uh, all right. So Can, it, all right. So what at the moment, um, I don't know, the girls sit there, they dance, people put this fake money, I don't know, on their G-strings or buy them a drink with the fake money. Uh, per- previously, um, they want they now want just half the money of the uh, half of the extra money they generate. Uh, present owners are getting sixty percent. Are they actually an organised union, and do they have a process where they can sit down with, with these people and negotiate with them? No, um, you know they are regarded as independent contractors, treated as overly controlled employees and their negoti- negotiating powers are really restricted you know yeah. like it's 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 obvious like the power imbalance is extreme and also it's not as if they can romp down the road like you know we could as full service sex workers to another brothel there aren't that many clubs around and they're dominated by just a few characters okay who owns calendar girls um, well, I, I won't nominate a name. But, Is it the Chow um, Brothers? No. Oh, it's not the Chow not Brothers? The Chow. Okay, it's someone else. Okay, well, let me find, we'll find out and we'll try and get them on the show and give them a right of reply. What is happening right now but, in the dispute? Well, I think they're considering, you know, the long game, the short game, you know, like what is going to be the most effective way to make um, that workplace safe and others. And they're thinking about the future, you know, like they want to protect the people who come after them. So they're a generation. They've stood up. Yeah. And on my watch, this is the first time I've seen stripper dance. That's why I think it's such a f- fascinating story. I think it really is a, fa- it? a fascinating story because of that, uh, Catherine. Uh, they're yes, all, they're exclusively right. women, young women? Yep, they uh, are. Yeah, and, okay. You know, Strident, stroppy, and you know, articulate, bright. You yeah. know, degrees Why coming out they of various, join, you know, It struck me if you're looking for a union or organisation to join, act as equity. That's right, and you know, those sorts of discussions um, will occur with all the unions. I imagine, you know, that's yeah. that's a. But you know, you have to get an employment status recognised and all of that. So it's quite. Quite a, it's quite a touchy sort of um, thing. Yeah, the new Workplace Relations Act might give might give a union more power to negotiate on their behalf. I'm also wondering: is there any sign? This has started at Calendar Girls in Wellington, and as far as I know, the strike, though I wouldn't know from personal experience. Oh, what a silly justification thing to say! Uh, to be honest, uh, is this spreading to other other strip bars or, or, or joints, uh, other businesses? Yeah, I think, you know, their networks are very strong and, you know, the discussions are certainly overflowing um, and there is, you know, a solidarity there, that word. But, okay. you know, they're, they're, um, they're really effective. Okay, so you re- you reckon they're going to get better paying conditions? I'm not going to hold my breath on it, but I think they've made a noise, you know, and, and I'm curious about a government response, actually, and I'm curious about... It's election here, yeah, Catherine. Is. Politicians are going to run a million miles from this. <laughs> not even the politicians. I'm just talking about the, you know, the groundswell of MB and yeah. WorkSafe. What can, what can the people who frequent and patronise these outfits, what can they do to Pay help? More. Pay more? Tip more. Tip more. Tip more. But you That's can't right. tip more in real money because the money isn't real money and it has to go back through the owners, right, to be reconverted yes. back into cash, right? 
That's right. So that's how and the they owners keep control. Yeah. Yeah. They can express an opinion. They can express an opinion about disquiet, you know, and uh, and put pressure there. Yeah. All right, Catherine. Look, we'd love to talk to one of the people directly involved too at some stage if you could help us tee that up. I do think it's a fascinating story about power control and the modern world and people standing up for what they want. So I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thanks, Sean. Take it easy. Uh, Dame Catherine Healy from the Sex Workers Collective on, well, the strippers' strike. Let's call it that. It could go nationwide. You got a view on that? Don't be embarrassed. Ring up and say you go to those places. I... I'm not saying I've never been in a place like that. I've always found them a little weird. I've always found them a little weird, but that doesn't mean it's, 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 it's legal, guys. Um, but it sounds like the people who work there are treated appallingly. Um, and Sean, strippers, poetry, sex workers, pick the wrong day to give up drinking, valium and smoking. Regards, Hughes, it's a hell of a programme this morning, I would agree, and there's more to come, actually.